Hi, I'm Roy. I'm Christine. I'm Mish. And welcome to our channel, Married to a Filipina. Howdy, YouTubers around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are. Uh, sorry it took so long to, to get this video out. If you only knew how many times we tried to make a video and uh, something happened technically. We're not experts, of course. We're just the, uh, the average American and uh, Filipino. And uh, we had some wind problems and some more technical problems. And uh, sometimes I tend to work uh, a lot of hours. And man, I tell you what, I can't think on the fly, you know. So it's like uh, we did a few videos and we scrapped them all. So tonight, uh, it's uh, Monday evening of Memorial Weekend. I said to my wife, you know, I have to make a video. So uh, we just... Uh, Cook some New York strip on the grill and some sweet corn. And I said, by golly, I'm coming out here to make a video. So the title of our video tonight is When Good Plans Go Go Wrong. And if you follow a lot of the, the gentlemen uh, that I do around the world, uh, you've seen a lot of the issues when people that may or may not have had good plans failed. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about our plan. Number one, I was extremely fortunate that uh, uh, the first day I was on a dating site that I had 127 emails from different girls, um, which I systematically went down the line and eliminated. Um, I finally met Christine. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I, I wasn't a superhuman being. Uh, I didn't have incredible intelligence. Um, in fact, uh, you know, I sent money to a couple that I shouldn't have. Um, and actually, I sent money to one that I'm glad I did. She wasn't a scammer. Uh, she just needed some money, and she was in real dire straits. And uh, she did get back on her feet, and I, I had seen her on Facebook after that, and she thanked me, and uh, all was good. And never asked me for any more money, by the way, so that was wonderful. But anyway, I had a plan uh, that I would meet this wonderful Filipina and uh, we would get to know each other and fall madly in love. And then I would fly over there and then we would even be more in love. And, you know, then I would file for a K-1 visa and everything would be hunky-dory. Well, consequently, um, that story actually happened. It was, um, it, was, uh, it was a whirlwind. In fact, last night, my wife and I were together and I... I said, you know, honey, I'd marry you again. And she gave me a kiss, and she said the same thing. In fact, she's over there right now out of the camera watching me because she's a little camera shy, and hopefully she'll overcome that in the future because I, I was going to make a video with uh, with her and Ish, and like I said, we tried a couple times. But I, but I wanted to get a video out so at least you guys would know, hey, they're still alive. They're still functioning every day. So here we are. So... Anyway, I met Christine. Uh, I flew over to the Philippines. Uh, it was a it was a storybook. Uh, it was a storybook story. I guess I don't know the word I could tell you. Um, and maybe she can edit some of this out. I don't know. But uh, it was uh, it was everything that I envisioned it to be, and it was all happening in real time. So. Uh, I went over, I met her. Um, we both kept talking about plans of the future, e even though we really had no ties uh, other than talking on Skype for literally six hours a day or more. I had brought a ring with me, and on Pang Lao, we were talking, sitting out on the beach, and I just thought there's enough of this uh, uh, if or when or how. Uh, and I went and I Went to the bungalow, I grabbed uh, the ring, I brought it back, and uh, I asked her to marry me. And from there, it's uh, it's literally history, you know. Uh, I went along uh, every day. We, we chatted many hours. My girlfriend was literally in my phone. You want to see my fiancé? There she is. She's there, everywhere. Everywhere I went, I took her with me. Um, I wanted to make sure that she could trust me, and uh, she did the same. And uh, we, we never had any of them issues. And uh, 
lo and behold, she came here. So that's the story of us. And now, uh, going forward, um, we've put a, we put a five-year plan together. We have a 13-year-old son, and uh, he's going into eighth grade. And we need to get him through high school, and of course his U.S. citizenship, and then we can plan our future in the Philippines. Now we're uh, we're in the in the beginning stages of searching for some land. Um, in fact, we're going back next month. We're going to be looking on the island of Sikihor. Not so sure about that yet. Or north of uh, Dumaguete to uh, Bias and uh, the southern tip of, of Cebu up as far north as Mobwa. And we haven't made any uh, plans or commitments to any of them. Uh, that's just the area we're looking. My wife favors south of Mobwa because we're two and a half hours from Cebu City, um, which makes sense because her family's there. I have uh, numerous friends in the Dumaguete area. We're only 20 minutes by ferry to go over there and visit. So it's, it's, it's all pretty good. Doesn't matter to me. Um, I love the Philippines no matter where I've been. I love the Philippines. So, it, you know, happiness comes from the heart. It doesn't come from the place you're at. So that's our plan. And at that five-year point, we're going to go there and then we're going to go back and forth. And the reason we chose not to settle 100%, of course, uh, number one, I have VA healthcare. Uh, and, uh, I'm not getting any younger, so I figure, well, if we stay over there seven or eight months of the year, come back over here, I can do uh, all my healthy stuff with the VA, we can see the, all the kids, and, uh, and I have four children from a previous marriage, so, uh, um, you know, there's plenty of, of, of kids here to keep us in binding, and our grandchildren, so uh, we'll go back and forth. And it's probably the best of both worlds, and I'm a realist. I know that there, there comes a point in time um, that I can't go back or maybe I can come back here. I don't know. I told her if I get sick over there, just wheel me out into the ocean. I'll pull the trigger. It's done. Um, but there'll be a point where we say, honey, I, I can't make the trip. Um, either way, uh, that, that's just, that's just a given at one point in time. Um, I already know about all the legal aspects of owning a home over in the Philippines. Um, it'll be in my wife's name. Um, I lease the property. And I'll, and I'll tell all of you folks that because I'm sure otherwise I get a bunch of comments. Uh, I'm going to lease the property from my wife. Uh, at 25 years, I can renew a second lease. That probably won't happen unless I plan on living forever. That's eh, probably not going to happen. But, uh, but that's our plan. So I know the legal aspects of owning property. Um, I know the, the peril, so to speak, of the Philippines. And honestly... Um, you know, at this, it's this point in time in my life, <laughs> really, it's, it's only money. You know, money doesn't make you happy. Um, I have enough money to be happy, more than enough money to be happy. And I'm not a rich man by any means. Um, but I'm rich from within, and I'm good with that. So that's our plan. Now, I know that if you follow a lot of people on, uh, on Facebook or uh, YouTube, You've seen a lot of plans go awry. Uh, the John Harper story, for instance, uh, that was on the website, Old Dog New Tricks. I'm friends with Paul McGill. Um, John's a great guy. John came over there with a bad plan. You know, he was uh, planning on being there for three years prior to Social Security, and he would have to live on virtually 600 US dollars a month. Can it be done? Yes, it can be done. Um, but I'm telling you, you want to live on 600 U.S. dollars a month in the Philippines, you better live like a Filipino. You're going to be eating rice and really crummy tasting fish. <laughs> there isn't much else you're going to be able to eat and some cheap vegetables to live on 600 U.S. dollars a month. That was not a good plan. Um, I'm not mentioning John Harper uh, to bash John. John's a friend of mine. But uh, if you followed anything with Old Dog New Tricks, you know what happened to John. Um, I'm one of the individuals in the U.S. Uh, that we helped him get established in Wisconsin. Um, everything is going well. I talk to John on a weekly basis. Um, you know, he's been to my home, blah, blah, blah. 
he's on the right track now. Uh, last I talked to him, he had close to 9,000 US dollars in the bank. He's eight months away, or seven months away actually, from going back to the Philippines, um, getting his social security. He'll be in great shape. And all through this whole ordeal, all he wanted to be was with his babies, with his twins. Uh, so now at least he has a good plan, a solid plan in place, and uh, and everything is everything is good. Um, if you followed any of the others, uh, of course, there's Jerry McCullough, Jerry and Nelma. Uh, they were in the U.S. They had a wonderful plan. They married. They, uh, they became U.S. citizens. Uh, they came back to the Philippines, had enough money set aside. They bought a home, uh, living a life, you know, the, the life that a lot of us dream of having. And then Jerry had a stroke. But consequently, Jerry had enough money um, that they could overcome all of this and they're still living a great life and he's rehabbing and uh, hopefully that'll continue. Uh, another individual that uh, that had a plan, uh, Monty Crew. I don't know if you follow him, but uh, Monty Crew family. In fact, I wanted to get Monty Crew uh, to come on board and do a video and we've been busy, both of us have. And uh, Monty had a plan uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, he was there for a year had a business in the U.S. Um, Monty's not a rich man. And, and, and honestly, if, when, when you look at a lot of these people uh, that you see on YouTube and uh, yeah, their plans may go awry, you know, th these aren't rich people for the most part, um, but they're people that, that just want to be happy. So, you know, you want to be happy and you don't have a ton of money, so you try to make it work. And uh, Monty didn't have a lot of money. But he sent enough money over so uh, Aragel uh, could build their home during the pandemic. Uh, Monty, Monty was uh, back in the U.S. working. And after the pandemic, he came back. He had a stroke and then a heart attack. And uh, things kind of went awry real fast. So uh, Monty went back to the U.S. I was with Monty during that, that point in his life. Um, he couldn't. He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't walk. He he couldn't get out of the house. He's trying to manage a business. He could barely talk. And uh, he went to the hospital. They did little for him there. And uh, they said you have one to three years to live. So, what are you going to do? And Monty and I talked at length about that. And I said, you know, Monty, you don't have much, but you have Aragel and you have Faith, your little daughter. If I was you, pardon me, there's a lot of bugs here tonight, but I'm going to spray the lawn. Trust me on that. Um, I said, go back. If you got five months, five days, or five minutes, I'd be with the people that, that really love you. And he went back. And since then, uh, his business has failed. He, uh, he sold it to some, uh, some gentlemen that just don't have a clue. Uh, he was the strong point of the business, and consequently with him gone, everything went to hell. And now he's in the Philippines with little of nothing, waiting for his Social Security to kick in. And uh, I know he got a lot of bashing from others, and, uh, you know, I, w I was there uh, during all that time with Monty. Uh, we talked every day, morning and night, during the day, because I drive trucks, so I can, I can chat with him going down the highway. And I... I I was all for it. I said, Monty, go there. Just just go, just go. You know, it'll all work out in the end. And uh, a lot of good people on YouTube uh, came forward, sent him donations. Uh, they're okay right now. We've got a little support group amongst uh, a few of us. And uh, we will never let Monty starve to death. And, you know, that that's what people do for others. And, and I'm not saying that you, you should base a plan upon other people. Uh, helping you, but what I'm saying is, is that uh, no matter what kind of a plan you have, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And and that's that's the most important thing that we have, the most valuable thing we have in our lives, and yet we take it for granted. You know, I'm I'm a realist, so I I know that at any point in time, uh, if if my health changes, uh, our plan's going to change. You know, it's it that's just the uh, the way it works. It's the way it has to work. And uh, sometimes, you know, moving to a foreign country 
and you just wanted to be in paradise with someone that you love um, without your health, man, I'm telling you, you're you're just you're in a tough tough place, man. There's uh there's no freebies there. You know, it's it's like here if you have a heart attack, you don't have insurance. Someone's going to help you. Um, they're not going to deny you. Uh, they will in the Philippines. Trust me. You go to a provincial hospital and they'll put you in the back room until you die. They well, we did everything we could. Sorry. And they'll play with maybe taps or something and throw you out the back door. I don't know. But uh, it's 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 a it's a tough place. You know, it's they don't have the social programs that we have in this country, and uh, it, it can really make it tough. So we're preparing for that. You know, we're we're preparing to make sure that we have enough. Um, and you know, when I when I leave this planet, I'm I'm sure there'll be probably three hours of darkness, like when you know when Jesus Christ left. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that my wife is taken care of. I want to make sure that uh, that things are are good for all of us. You know, and and I, I, I'm doing the best I can. And so, you've got to formulate a plan that incorporates all of them things. Of course, it incorporates the, the, the financial aspect. Um, if you're bringing your 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 girlfriend or fiance here, by golly, make sure that they become U.S. citizens. You know. Don't believe the scuttlebutt on the internet about, uh, oh, that's all they want is to become a U.S. citizen so they can leave you. Come on. That's the farthest from the truth. I know so many good people that have done just that, and they're as happy as I am. And and then again, it's it's up to you. You know, you, you can bring your fiancé over to the U.S., and you can treat her like a piece of garbage, and I guarantee you your marriage is going to fail, and it's just going to go down the tubes, you know? So... It's a two-way street. It takes both of you. You know, you, you make this commitment, and, uh, and both of you have to work forward uh, with your commitment in your marriage, in your relationship together. Um, it can't be lopsided. It can't be one-sided. And, uh, and you, uh, you, you make that plan, and you go forward with it, I guess. I, I don't want to get too tongue-tied here. But, but that's what it's all about. And then, and, and within that plan, you have to have escape routes, you know. We, we have an escape route here, you know. My golly, I get sick. Uh, our, our plan's changing. It's, it's literally going to change overnight, you know. And, you know, I got a hip that needs to be replaced. I had a stent put in my heart. Uh, honestly, I'm eating way healthier than I ever was, thanks to my Filipino wife. I, I never knew I loved eggplant. <laughs> so I eat a lot of different vegetables now and she cooks very healthy and uh, that's helping actually my blood pressure is wonderful I've lost some weight and it's like you know that's super super important I've seen a lot of people in the Philippines that their good plan failed and uh, consequently if I followed youtubers all over the world I'd probably see a lot of plans that have failed all over the world and uh, and I'm not one to sit here and bash anyone about shoulda, woulda, coulda. Uh, that, that's the past tense, and, uh, and I'm not talking about the past tense. I'm talking about today, and I'm talking about tomorrow. You know, re remember in, in school, they always told us that today was the first day of the rest of our life. They meant it. So uh, formulate a plan that you can live within the means. Try to execute your plan, and don't stray away. And have your escape routes. And... Uh, I have some friends, like I had mentioned uh, prior, that, uh, you know, their plan, they didn't have an escape route. Uh, in particular, Monty, he had, he had, he had no escape. Uh, John Harper got to a point that he had no escape either. Um, John, because of the love and focus for his twins, he let himself get to the point with no escape. And, and I didn't mention earlier about John, uh, I don't know if a lot of you had knew a lot about his background, but John had a series of strokes. And, uh, and that has definitely played uh, into the, the psyche of, of how he reacted to certain situations. So all of these individuals, I, and I've, I've mentioned that it, it just happens. It just happens. So you have to try to formulate a plan these mosquitoes are horrible and they're huge.
but uh, you have to formulate a plan for yourself and 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 put your put your escape routes in there for yourself you know um, I'll tell you a little story before I cut uh, a few years back we were in Ormoc Leyte and every day there was a young lady that would come by our hotel and she would beg and every day of course I would put my hand up or I would say something uh, uh, I guess I would be the typical American that uh, had no knowledge of social programs or aspects of the Philippines and say things that I shouldn't have and the last day that she was there was day four I said to her you got one in the bread basket you got two dragon behind you you know your bad choices don't make it my responsibility to uh, support you in any way you know a typical arrogant American at that point and that evening, after we had a wonderful evening out and, you know, spent money basically like a drunken sailor, I'm walking through the alley and she was laying there on a piece of cardboard with her two little babies clutched to her breast with a piece of cardboard over them. You know, I felt about six inches tall. And uh, that changed my, my whole mindset, my, my whole... My whole psyche, my, my heart, it just instantly changed. And uh, I found some kind of compassion within myself that I've never had before. And, uh, and then I realized that if I judge anyone, that, that eliminates all responsibility. And we do it in this country on a daily basis, on a maybe an hourly basis. We judge someone by their color or by the way they talk or the way they walk or their weight or the vehicle they drive, the house they live in. And as long as you continue judging everyone, it eliminates all responsibility for others. And uh, that made me realize that just how lonely of a pathetic people that we could become. And uh, thank God through the YouTube community, I met so many wonderful people that were willing to help others and it broadened my horizons uh, more than I could ever, ever imagine. And they're caring and wonderful people and they help each other and it's such a great gift. Um, one other uh, fellow that I didn't mention was Daryl Mileham. Uh, had a horrible stroke, had cancer in the Philippines. Some people came together and got him back to the UK where he's getting medical treatment. His wife is in college so she can support herself and he'll hopefully come back uh, next year or the year after when his health is better. All done by people all over the world. I, I can't even imagine how wonderful that is. And uh, so it's like you, you got to have a great plan. You can't, you can't depend upon others, but thank God there are others out there that are willing to help when you have a bad plan. So uh, hopefully I'm not losing, trying to lose track here on, on what I'm talking about, but uh, I wanted to give you a kind of a little bit of an insight into our life and, uh, and, and what our plan is. So until next time, you have a wonderful, uh, wonderful day. Hope to see you soon.